So I did a warm up. I did 10 minutes at 500 RPM and 10 minutes at like 1000 RPM. The motor's broke in and the bearings broke in and I had it all packed with grease. It is still packed with grease. You can see it barely even changed anything. I was gonna pack more. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there, but. So on these Vivor lathes, in order to get um, a tapered bearing in there, um, the stock cover, where's the stock cover? This is all the stuff I replaced. Um, here it is, the stock cover. So this stock cover sits flat against it and it makes it flat here, right? And what I did was I took a steel plate and I made it so it covers the bearing, right? The whole bearing gets sealed in there. And that way I'm able to add oil and I cut a little slot here, you can see. I can stick my gun right in there. And I don't have it on here right now, but this one has the same thing. And then when it's done, I cover it with a felt um, liner. So I put a felt liner. This one has a hole in it too. There's a hole in it right here. I'm not really sure I can get to this one though. But anyways, there's a hole there with a liner, just like this. Um, so I could uh, get in there. I thought I was gonna need to grease it after breaking it in, but I guess not. It's still packed full of grease. And then another way I'll have to get it is uh, I'll be able to get it from here. Once I undo these two screws, this flap will come up and I can get into the bearings from the back. So the reason why I make this video, not that I care, people keep sp uh, shooting misinformation saying that you can't run tapered bearings because you need to set preload and all this blah, 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 and you can't seal them. It's not that hard. I took a plate, I made a hole, I cut it, and these Vivor lays, the gear that they come with, it comes with these set screws on here, right? This threads in, you can see the threading, this threads into the lathe, so it's solid here, right? And then when you when I put these, um, what is it, grub screws here, this allows me to put tension, right? Because this part that it pushes against is on a keyway, so it can slide back and forth on the shaft, right? And then this, since it has um, grub screws, it can, keep tension on the whole entire thing and so the whole entire thing gets tension and it's all coming from this piece that's um pushing the tension and so there's somebody talking about how the bearings need to have tension on uh, going the right way on both sides and that's exactly what these are these two bearings are angled towards each other and they're tensioned into each other um again i wouldn't even take the time to make this video except for people keep saying that you can't do this with normal vivor lathes you could do this with a normal this is the amazon 600 dollar lathe and I got tapered roller bearings and brushless motors and I spent less than $1,000. My whole system is like less than a thousand. I just got an iPad holder, right? I got an iPad holder so I can move my controller wherever I want. DRO costs a hundred bucks on eBay. I just made some little rails here. I made a rail back there. It was super easy and it, was, <laughs> it wasn't expensive. None of this was expensive. And so that's why I'm making this video. I could care less. I just want people to know you can have a lathe, highly capable lathe for $1,000 if you put the work in. All you got to do is put the work in. Do the time. I mean, this took me a fucking week. I had to cut all this out. I still got to do some more. Right now, I'm going to make a ten I didn't make a tensioner. So I'm going to make a tensioner that pushes this back so I could set the tension on this belt. Guys, get out there. Do it. Don't listen to what people say on Amazon or fucking whatever. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Get out there and do it. It can be done.